701. Thank you, Anthony, for turning on the recording. Um, let's do a roll call. Why not? <laughs> okay. Uh, Trustee Shaw. Here. Trustee Graziano. Here. Trustee Jardine. Here. Steve Hayes. Here. Trustee Church. Here. Trustee Friedman. Here. Trustee Zabby is absent. All right. Thank you. We'll do the pledge. Please join me. I believe in the Supreme Court of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Any additions or corrections to today's agenda? Thank you for sending it out uh, early for us to take a look at. James, we appreciate that. Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll go to uh, any members of the public who wish to address the board. Is there anyone online? No, okay, thanks Anthony. Uh, then we've got minutes to approve from last month. Our trustee secretary, Friedman, completed these, right? Yeah, excellent. Any comments? on the minutes from last month. If no comments, I'd be looking for a motion to approve. I will move to approve the minutes. Thank you, Trustee Church. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Trustee Jardine. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. One abstain. Trustee Hayes, thank you. All right, that brings us to the library director update. So your first month. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's been uh it's been quite a learning experience. Um everyone's been wonderful. The staff has been great. Um just uh yeah, I spent a lot of time um I uh, spent a lot of time just getting online to accounts so that I could <laughs> do all the things that needed to be done. And I think uh, I think I finally got that squared away. Um, and thank you all for your uh, for your patience and your uh, and your encouragement. Um, if uh, if you have any questions about anything in the written report, uh, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Um, Otherwise, the only things I, that are not in there that I uh, wanted to mention, at least I don't think I remember putting them in there, uh, we have just posted for the position of uh, circulation and reference manager. Um, those ads were up today, both locally and through the uh, Rails website, the library system website, and uh, on the Illinois Library Association website. So, and people have already started responding in less than 24 hours. Yes. Yeah. So that is, so that is great. Um, and as you know, uh, uh, Katie uh, leaves us on Friday. We'll have a, a, a staff are going to have a, a small farewell for her after our staff meeting on Friday. Um, so if you're uh, able to come and say goodbye at that time, uh, staff meeting usually, staff tells me usually ends about 1130-ish. And then we're going to have some cake and other things, and then they start uh, preparing to open up the library at noon. Um, and I know that Janie is actually Janie's agreed to. That's great. Um, attend. Awesome. Uh, on behalf of the board, and if anyone else can make it, that would be great. Unfortunately, I'm not able to. I have a full day commitment and another conflicting part day commitment already. Great. Um, and the other one, I think I mentioned to some of you when I started that um, I was going to be traveling next week with the Harwood Institute to Florida, but uh, as of uh, yesterday, that trip has been canceled because the area that we would be we're going to be working in has been heavily affected by the her, both hurricanes. So we have to uh, we're postponing that. So I will not be traveling to Florida next week as I expected. Okay, any, other, yeah. any other questions? Um, just a quick question about the posting. Yes. How long is the posting up for? So I posted it, uh, at least on Rails, saying that we were posting it and leaving it up until filled. Okay. Um, the Now, uh, Rails will automatically take it down after two months. 
Um, I don't recall what uh, ILA's policy is or how long they leave them up. Uh, but when I posted rails, I said that we would leave it posted until we had filled the position. And then you will have the capability of going in and removing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No problem. No problem. So, again, the only places we posted are on our website here in the building, the rails website and the Illinois Library Association website. Great. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anything else from no, the director? That's all. Okay. Any other questions for David? Okay. Oh, I, I just kind of, I really enjoyed the org chart. Yeah. So. The organization chart? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like we've never. Oh, you've never seen that before? No. So oh. that's so, it was just nice to see okay. all the names on one page. So that's great. Mm -hmm. just a, and I can't even, I can't even take credit for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who, who created it? I think I, I don't know if Renee did before she left, or if uh, or if uh, one of the managers might have done it, Jillian perhaps. Mm -hmm. gotcha. But it was already done. Helped yeah. see everyone's name. Yes, yeah, it was helpful for me. I'll tell you that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is was there anything from the statistics report? Uh, no, just that um, I I realized after I included what I did that you this might not be the format you're used to seeing yeah. them in and if you would rather that I I, I uh, put them in a different format I think you I think you were used to seeing them in sort of a line graph um this is a bar graph if that's again and and if there are if there are certain statistics that are that are you are used to seeing that I did not include that you want to see uh let me know because in 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 the sensor system there are there's the capability for other other statistics. So I, I'll say this. I've usually felt a bit overwhelmed by the number of statistics that we would get in the monthly packet. Like how is this feeling? And you know, thinking about just like circulation, this is total physical, but total electronic and not electronic, right? Programming, collection totals. I would say the only thing I would like to see added would be e the um e resources e resources okay yeah. great I can do that Hoopla, canopy uh -huh. Libby and just kind of the the monthly trend sure. you know Bonnie historically I think there were there were prior boards that asked for a great idea uh, of detail problem um, and that's why it kind of got the same gargantuan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. yeah I mean and, and I value your input as to you know these are kind of the key four or five metrics that yeah. the board should have its eye on definitely these so. yes definitely okay. these. Perfect. any other questions on statistics Sorry, right, can you remind me what is yeah. what does it mean? Uh, what's the difference between an active program and a passive program? I uh, I think here they define it as active in person, passive virtual. I think also like with the kid, like an example, the kid crafts mm -hmm. they'll count how many have been taken and then passive participants, ah, okay. number yeah. of participants. All right. So like number of um, you know families who. I will I will make sure I get a complete definition for you. David, may I jump in and- uh, Oh, yes, I forgot. Uh, I Katie's, on, uh, Katie's online there, go ahead. Um, it A passive program is when staff are not directly involved. So like a takeaway craft oh. is a passive program, whereas an active program is in-person or virtual um, if a staff member is leading it or if we've paid a presenter to um, do this program. It's something that IPLAR, has um, specifically asked for. Thank you. Is it, and can you give an example of a passive program then? Yeah, so the takeaway crafts in the children's department, they do crafts every week and they just have them out on the counter for kids to take. So there's, other than the staff creating that kit, the there's no program specific interaction when the kid takes it away. Also, it's okay. not a set date and time. All right, whether. awesome. The virtual or in person. I totally got yeah. that wrong. Thank you. So what's, sorry. So what's the difference between like the purple and the yellow? Is it kids and adults? Let me look at the. So it's like total passive program. It's total passive program attendance. 
right? That like, kind of fronts events so, versus so no, number, yeah, of people. number of events versus number of attendees. Number of so events. there were 12 passive programs oh, okay. and 1132 attendees of those programs. Oh, okay, okay. Makes sense. Yeah, so would that be like the summer reading program? Is like that's why it's so high in in June, June and July. Uh, my that's my uh, going to be my assumption. Katie, yeah. is that is that what you think? Um, this is Jillian actually. I oh, Jillian, I'm sorry. So our summer tends to be our busiest time of year overall for programming and circulation. Mm -hmm. So that would be my guess. I believe that we had really good numbers this quarter or this year. I mean, for a summer reading club. Well, thank you. Thanks, Julian. Any other questions on statistics? No, just kind of going forward in the next one is there is a way to sort of condense it down a little bit, maybe so that like oh, September's statistics are sort of missing on, on that. Oh, I am sorry. Yes. Okay. And yes. it's probably because it's it's set up in legal, maybe and it's printing out. Oh, maybe. Okay, yes. Yes, I will make sure that I can see that's cut off now. I apologize. Hi. Any other questions on statistics? All right, we'll move on to the financial reports. David, is there any particular uh, transactions you want to? The only ones I wanted to specifically mention are you saw that there were a couple of payments to Engber Anderson Architects. Those are for design services um, in the amounts of uh, $1,159.53 and $1,040. Um, I'm assuming those are. Uh, those are related to um, the ongoing project. Mm -hmm. um, also, I just wanted to mention that there was, uh, even though I know your law firm now is Ansel Blink, there was an invoice we received for some services performed by Peregrine Stein. Uh, this goes back to 2023. Um, and uh, we, I don't know if this was a duplicate invoice that they sent because the other, the, the first wasn't, uh, Paid, but we uh, we put this one through as well, and then uh, and then the bill from uh, Ravinia Plumbing for uh, eleven hundred and two dollars. Uh, one of the toilets upstairs uh, stopped working properly, and um, the cost of putting in a new one uh, was just slightly more expensive than repairing the old one. So we had a new one installed to go along with the, uh, to, to match the other ones that mm -hmm. had more recently been installed. Right. right, yes. Many of the toilets in the building are new. Yeah. <laughs> now, and now, and now perhaps all, all of them. Now I think perhaps all. all of them, all six of them. Yes, right. so those are the ones I wanted to play. And I'll, I'll just also comment that when I came in to sign checks, I asked Laurence about the um, check for our previous legal counsel, because I was also yeah. curious. Um, and it appears to have been either it wasn't invoiced or an invoice that got lost in the mail. It wasn't paid. So Ron's did go back through the books to make sure we had not already paid that invoice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, just in, in regard to the, like the first section of our financial reports, um, just the, the things that catch my eye, right? Our property tax revenue has come in at close to 90% or five months of a 12 month year. My rough mental math says that's 45%. So this is when our account balance will start to generate more interest because we've collected so much of the um, revenue for the for the entire fiscal year. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, the library salaries look right on. The medical insurance continues to run a little light, um, but that's been consistent month to month. postage, everything, uh, your, let's see, our furnishings are a little high. That's not a surprise. Capital expenses, total expenditures at 46%. So, and those are that kind of quick visual scans or checkpoints that I 
um, usually take a look for when these reports come out. So it appears everything looks financially healthy, in my opinion. Bill, anything that you would add? Just so we have kind of jumped looking at what was in the next year's budget. I was looking at some of the expenses that we were around. The, the building uh, maintenance one is is off by a lot. Um, and and I know that we we said that we're going to use some of the grant monies, you know, for some of that um, in, in play there. But just something to sort of look for. I mean, we, we spent 19 on, on a budget of 15 and we're five months in. So that was tracking. We know that there's going to be a lot more building maintenance issues that are going to be, be part of that. Yeah. And then I think there might have been. Remember we, the painting, the six thousand dollar paint job for the south side of the building. It got delayed due to rain, and I think it actually happened in this fiscal year. But we had the money in last fiscal year. There was something like that yeah. this year. We may have moved that then into the reserve. Exactly. Kind of exactly. Not not lost out, but we 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 put it in there. Yeah. Um, and then just on the on the salary number uh, that's in there. Um, does does that include everything like everybody will be in any positions um, for that we got um, what's in there? Sorry, say that again. Does it include? So, so is that is what's in there at the moment? Like the, the month um, is is like at sixty one. Is that typical? Is is does that have it? Is that a fully staffed number? Or are we missing certain positions over there? Oh, okay. Do we have vacancies? Um, so I think if we look at the org chart that was provided, that may indicate. I, I I was told that you had that the board at some point had approved yeah. a salary for a part-time maintenance position. So that's in the budget. That we have not filled that position. So that one is that one's over. That's the one that's just yeah. underneath, underneath there. However, remember that when Renee presented the rationale and the financial budget, if yeah. you will, for the building and grounds role, it was, you know, we've paid this much out to the contractor, Gary, I forget his last name. Um, is it Levin? Yeah. Yeah. Gary Levin on a routine basis. We've had to pay, you know, for a plumber to come in and snake or whatever to uh, unclog a kitchen drain or the craft drain over there. Um, so much, much of the budget to support the building was coming out of contractors, not necessarily out of the salary line. But perhaps that's something that we adjust for in next fiscal year. Yeah. Well, we do. I mean, we we need to have somebody here to to take care of of day to, not only day to day building maintenance, but to help to manage the systems and communicate with contractors and vendors. Um, if I'm able, I'd love to be able to help fill that position um, because it's. I mean, it's in just a couple of weeks. It's clear to me that um, the the number of things that need to be done, there's no one available to do them. Uh, you know, thanks to Bonnie's introduction, I did reach out to somebody at the park district about providing some temporary assistance on some of these things, but I haven't, we haven't connected yet about that. I believe this is a situation that, um, that what is it, John Beeler needs to look into liability insurance. That's what he's one of the things, one of the things he said. Yeah. 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 One of the things he said, but again, I, I, I. I'm I'm trying to make it a priority to see if we can get someone right. in this and interim period. If we were to do use somebody from there, we'd be picking them on the Uh well, I, we haven't even had that discussion. Okay. We haven't even had that discussion. I find out it's possible we're supposed yeah. to be here. Right. Money. Yeah. Yep. Bill, is there anything else in the budget? No, I think I think when we get into the budget for next year, there's there's things in, in there and some accounts that are plus or minus that we will get to totally the, agree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At our next finance meeting on Thursday. All right. Well, then, um, if there aren't any other questions or comments on the um, detailed revenue and expenditure report, I'm open for a motion. Looking for a motion. So move to accept the uh, revenue expense report for the period of the next meeting. Last second. Okay, thank you, Trustee George and Trustee Hayes. 
next uh, financial. So we'll do a quick roll call. Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Graciano. Aye. Trustee Jardine. Aye. Trustee Hayes. Aye. Trustee Church. Aye. Trustee Friedman. Aye. Okay. All right. And then David mentioned a number of the larger checks that have been cut this month. Um, were there any additional questions about checks from this month? I just had, I had the same question on the Peregrine and the, just the Ravinia bills, but thank you for clarifying that. Um, Great America Financial Services, how is that different from impact on the top year maintenance? Uh, Great America is... Sixteen two 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 for five eighty nine, and then we had two impact networking, and they in two four and two five for copier maintenance and supplies. I just noted it because it was a different a name I was yeah. not familiar with. So I will find out. I should pause to see if Katie or Jillian are familiar with the vendor. What's the name of it? I couldn't. Yeah, hear. I, one I missed is, it. As uh, well. One is Great America Financial Services. And one is impact networking. Impact yeah. is definitely the printer. Yeah, this yeah. is the copier printer system. Um, great. Um, uh, that name is ringing a bell. The other one, but I can't remember off the top of my head what it refers to. But um, but yeah, that one that one does sound familiar. It says it's for copier maintenance. I'm just wondering if it's like maybe uh, like when we talked about like the ink is like the yeah, cartridge yeah, stuff. The over and above of all the printing, maybe that's um, would be a surplus that we pay over and because we get a certain amount monthly a lot. Yeah, and yes. if we go over that, then we pay extra. Uh, or and one of them could be just the lease payment that mm -hmm. is going through the. Uh, I can I can get confirmation. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I think yeah. Laurence might be the best. Yeah, uh, she will. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just did like a quick search. It looks like it's an equipment finance company, so it could yeah. be like, yeah, yeah. that's a payments process oh our lease through. our lease oh, yeah. yeah they're leased oh uh, yeah okay that would make sense stuff, like, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Might be. although the, the one for 589 seems a lot but i don't right. know if that's i'll find out lease. for sure i'll Thank find you. out for sure okay any other check questions any motions regarding checks The check numbers are 16207 to 16235. I will move that we accept the checks with the number 16207 through 16235 for uh, the period uh, September 16th through October 16th, 2024. Thank you, Trustee Church. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Trustee Hayes. Roll call, please. Okay, Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Gaffiano. Aye. Trustee Dirty. Aye. Trustee Pays. Aye. Trustee Dirt. Aye. Trustee Freeman. Aye. All right. Thank you. Committee reports. We have one committee that met in the last month. Our HR committee. Chair <laughs> Graziano. Okay. Um, Give us the deets. Well. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone that came to our HR planning meeting. We really love meeting. Um, we, our project right now is we are working to find an executive search firm to lead the search for our next director. So um, Ali has been a wonderful resource and um, guest of our committee. So thank you to, for all of our hard work. Um, she helped us put together an RFP. Um, and that was posted on our website, and it was also sent to the firms that Renee gave us for as a reference for uh, to reach out to in order to lead the search. So we had five um, firms on that list. Um, I've heard back from all of them. Uh, we've received two proposals. I haven't gotten the second one into the folder yet because we just got it today. Um, and we're waiting on two others, one of them, Library Strategies, who we reached out to, they no longer do executive searches. So oh. I expect by Friday, we'll have four proposals to look at, and we are meeting next Monday to review them. And Allie put together a rubric for us um, to uh, use to determine which one would be the best. I need to go with. Do we, do we have that on the calendar for sure? I think it was Monday at two o'clock. 
Yeah, I will be able to join on Monday as well. Wonderful. Forward to it. Yes. So um, Allie created a folder that everyone would be able to access in order to look at their proposals, but we don't have all of them in yet. So I've just been creating mini folders. Is I that see okay? It. it looks great. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So um, yes. Yeah, so we've heard back from Stack so far and Dieters and Todd. So we're waiting on two others. Well done. Thank you. Is there Thanks, anything else we're missing? And he pronounces it Diders. Diders. I'm sorry. Thank What's you. Up? That is an important <laughs> thing. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. All right. That's all for Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we, we, I'm pretty sure we're going to have finance on Thursday at some point. Some point. It's okay. okay. Land the time. Okay. You know, you said earlier in earlier in the afternoon work better. Yeah, I've got the whole afternoon. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, so you know what your Thursday afternoon looks like? I today. shouldn't tell you. Uh, yeah. I think the only thing that I typically have on a Thursday afternoon is a management team meeting at one o'clock. But you know, and, that, then and that's you know, that's it. Runs till when? Uh, usually goes for about an hour to an hour and a half. But I mean that can be moved well, too. No, I, I mean it, it, two thirty would work. Two thirty, I can make sure. it work too. Okay, right. okay. then we get two thirty then. Yeah, great, awesome. Okay, when you when you do send out the invitation, of course, include Matt. I don't think he's going to be able to attend, but you never know. Thank you. All right, we are on to item number ten: library I foundation. I just mentioned that the OG needs to meet, and so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think those were happening. They were happening on Wednesdays in the summer outside of the school year, eight in a day, like four o'clock. Is that no longer? I'm still, well, I'm still not done until six o'clock, but, but I have only have about three more weeks. So then I'll be able to do four o'clock. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. So for now, seven would be best. Okay. So do you want to try um, next Wednesday? Uh, Wednesday, October 23rd. Yeah. Seven. Are you dating? Uh, next Wednesday, the 23rd at 7 p.m. I could do that. Yeah. So building committee. So we're on. So, so for item number 10, um, this the issue with the library foundation sort of came to an end because um David received a letter saying you were uh, delinquent from the state in fees. Mm -hmm. and, as, and and the filing of the annual report. And the final, filing of the annual report. And um, I called Kathy right away, uh, Kathy Meyerhoff, and um, she said that apparently what happened was that that was from 2021. She looked into it, and at that time, Eric was supposed to be taking care of that stuff, and I don't know what happened, but he let that one slip. She said that was unusual. Um, he was usually on top of it. Um, so she is uh, taking care of doing that filing and doing fees and all that kind of stuff. But what I wanted to know was um, from her what detail. She told me what is in there. The, the actual CD that we have that I believe has uh, 36,000 and change in it will be due on will mature on the 19th. And so it's a matter of do we roll it over for another year, um, which where it's 4% interest. At this point, I think what she was thinking about doing, if we just let it sit, um, it will go to a very low interest rate or she can move it into our checking account and our checking account. I believe it has around nine thousand dollars in it. It had more, but we paid for the mm -hmm. computer tables that um, are right in the front end, right. Right. Mm -hmm. and that came out of that. So um, that's part of why B and G needs to meet, and um, 
here's the, uh, the other thing is sort of existential. Do we as a board want to continue keeping the foundation going um, sort of inactively, but filing all the fees and the reports and stuff and keeping a minimum amount in, in there just to keep it going for what, such time in the future that we will be doing another drive or should we liquidate it? So I think that's a decision of the foundation board as opposed to this board. Well, you're looking at the foundation board pretty much. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, Kathy I, and I. Uh, John, John and Kathy, uh, we're going to contact John and see, but um, Kathy definitely wants out. It's, it's just, it's, it's a little strange mm. because I, uh, here, here's what, here's what I propose. Okay. I propose that I will be off the board in two years, and I wanted to ask David, what do you think about the? Well, we always had two board members and our library director. That was the foundation under Eric two directors ago. Okay, Renee thought that that was problem. Well, and we got legal advice. We got legal advice that saying not, that. Yeah. So I well, sorry, the legal. I want to be clear. The legal advice was the boards should be operate independently um, from one another. Yeah, correct, correct. Okay. And I think that's right. Okay, so my feeling is that if Kathy wants to hand over all of the stuff to me right now, I am the treasurer of it. Okay. And I know she wants out, but she has yet to hand it all over to me, not because she doesn't trust me or anything I guess just she's got a lot of other stuff going on in her life right now too okay so I I, I propose that we just kind of keep it going a couple of the people who are maybe going off the board in the next cycle election cycle I'm wondering if any anybody knows anybody who would be interested in, in being part of the foundation is a lot less work than being on this board okay so that's something to consider, and um, and I can just keep kind of keep it going until I go off in two years, and then I would be happy to be, you know, to be running the board, and we can have elections on whoever the trustees of the foundation are, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that that is that's what my thinking is. The question is, what should we do with that CD? Um, do we do we have something? <coughs> do we have a need? <laughs> Because one thing that we have to do for legal reasons is we have to make a proposal, formal proposal from the library to the foundation saying, this is what we what we want to do with the money. This is our plan. And this is how much it's going to be. Yeah. So I, I thought that the foundation had decided to um, use the money that's in the CD matching funds for our accessibility grant and my understanding is that our Illinois fund where our general balance is actually earns upwards of five percent okay so back in July or whenever that was stated I actually thought that the money would transfer this month the upon maturity okay um I think it could be transferred as, you know, and probably should be transferred as a restricted grant. But I remember following up uh, 12, 18 months ago, there was a question about how much interest does our general fund balance earn? And it was quite high. And it will probably drop down a bit now. Yes. No, but it, it should be sort of just north of 4%. Okay. But, but that would... Like, it's, like Jamie said, the, if you just let it roll over, it will go into a low interest, you know, the point zero, you know, point five percent, you know, and then otherwise you lock it up. But I think CD rates are going to be, they're going to anticipate interest rates coming down, so you're not going to get it. Mm -hmm. You're better off doing what we just said, I mean, just to, to move it into a loan. Yeah. So if, if, um, the foundation would like a letter from the library, and I, as the library board, can author such letter. I'm happy yes. to do so. Please do so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Homework. Me. Homework assigned. <laughs> and and I think if you if you tell 
uh, in the letter if you say that by doing so, we'll get a higher interest rate on it and then we'll be spending it when, you know, uh, I, I think she, I'm not sure if Kathy knows about matching funds. Was she in on that conversation? I um, I think Renee and Kathy Meyerhoff spoke directly about the matching funds for no. I, I mean, um, I think it was presented as an option. I don't know that there was a commitment to that by Kathy. I thought there was, but I I I, 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 I would agree with you. She didn't mention it to me, but her head is in a lot of different spaces right now. Okay, and um. Uh, so she may have forgotten. Because okay. I, I thought at the September board meeting it was, so we've identified all of the matching funds between friends. That we um, I that think we, it was that a, we had access to. Yeah, okay. the, possibly, yeah. the friends okay. did meet there. Okay. For yes. us. But I don't recall there being a firm commitment to the foundation other than it being an option. Okay, so that, that would take care of the funds in the CD. The, the other question is then, what what does the board, and I realize that this is not a board's decision to make, I'm just asking your feelings, should we keep the foundation going? Keep the minimum amount in the checking account, whatever that is, I'm not sure what it is. I don't know if it's $1,000 or $10,000. I've got to look into that. I've got, you know, I, I just need to sit down with Kathy and I don't and, and go over all that stuff. And she's, she said she's got a stack about this high of paper. She's going to hand me plus stuff on the drives and stuff. She just, um, um. So by voice vote, all those in favor of maintaining the foundation? Wait, can I say something? Yeah. I don't know that that is in our spirit. Would we like to see the foundation continue? I just am concerned because I don't want to take, I do not yeah. think that there is a world in which our board making a recommendation in like a formal capacity mm -hmm. for a funding body, if you will, mm -hmm. to advise a funding body that could benefit the library is wise. Mm -hmm. um, speaking from a non-municipal fundraising person, right. that would be a red flag. Okay, so I just want to think for that. So, any other said, comments about the foundation? We we could we could have maybe a discussion after we adjourn, just to, to advise them. Yeah, as as uh, residents yeah. and of of Lake Bluff, as yes. interested yes. parties, not as a yes. board. Yes. yes. Okay. That thing. Okay. I, I just wanted to get this out there to, especially to the people who are soon to be on. <laughs> so, so there, may I ask a question? So, yeah. there, so there basically is no active foundation for that's right correct. Okay. Thank you, Janie. Thank You're you for the update on the foundation. Uh, we are on to new business. So, so, uh, so uh, uh, staff uh, told me that uh, the four, uh, sorry, the three uh, school and school district intergovernmental agreements are ready to be approved. Um, so they asked me to present them to you. So they're all in your in your packet for uh, for a final approval for the next term and. I think either Katie uh, or perhaps even Jillian might be able to answer some questions about those, um, but those are presented for approval. And I know the uh, the IGA you have with the village is there for your discussion. Okay. Katie, did you want to say anything about the uh, school agreements? Um. Yeah. Uh, I mean, basically, the agreements are largely unchanged from what they were, um, from what uh, from what we presented to the board and presented to the schools in the past. Um, the fees are still the same. Um, the terms are still the same. There were some slight adjustments to wording, but nothing substantial. Um, so it offers this exact same level of service. Um, 
we had talked um, when Renee was still here about possibly making more substantial changes to these agreements in terms of money that the school would pay to us in compensation for providing the IGA cards um, and possibly making some other uh, substantial changes as well. But we just had too many things going on. And in the interest of not interrupting library service for the kids, we decided to just for this year present the districts with the same, essentially the same agreement. Um, with the idea that this would be easy to pass. Um, and then we, and then um, whoever the next manager is, um, they and Eliza and the new permanent director will be able to talk about um, the future of the IGA program um, once everyone has has settled in. Um, and uh, the the only difference are this this is typical year to year, but the Forest Bluff IGA the ter the time frame for their contract runs December to November, um, as opposed to October to September for District sixty five and District one fifteen. Um, that is at Forest Bluff's uh, request, but otherwise the the agreements are functionally similar. Thank you, Katie. All right, so let's take these one at a time. The first one that appears as an addendum, if you will, in the packet is the, the schools, District 65. I will need to approve the intergovernmental agreement with school District 65. Thank you, Trustee Friedemann. Is there a second? Uh, thank you, Trustee Jardine. Roll call. Sure. Okay. Uh, Trustee Shaw? Aye. Trustee Graziano? Aye. Trustee Jardine? Aye. Trustee Hayes? Aye. Trustee George? Aye. Trustee Friedman? Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Our next agreement is with the like, whoop, 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 district number 115. I move to. Uh, Accept the intergovernmental agreement with school district. Thank you, Trustee Jurch. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Trustee Friedemann. Roll call, please. Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Graffio. Aye. Trustee Jardine. Aye. Trustee Hayes. Aye. Trustee Jurch. Aye. Trustee Friedemann. Aye. Thank you. And our third um, library services agreement is with Forest Bluff School. I will. To approve the IGA with Forest Bluff School. Thank you, Trustee Friedemann. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Trustee Graziano. Okay. Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Graziano. Aye. Trustee Jardine. Aye. Trustee Hayes. Aye. Trustee Church. Aye. Trustee Friedemann. Aye. Okay. Thank you. So then, um, just Bill, just another thing is I think we need to make some adjustments in next year's budget based on these numbers remaining flat year over year. Okay, I think that might be this. I thought maybe they we had adjusted them. All right. Um, that brings us to the um. Sorry, we went a little out of order. Do you want to do the IGA now? New business A. Yes, we've done new business B, C, and D. We're gonna go back up to A. So, um, when David and I talked about this agenda we thought that we would be able to vote on an IGA between the library and the village. Um, last week, uh, we sent a revised IGA from the library over to the village. Didn't hear anything for a while. And of course, an hour after I said to David, put it in the packet, <laughs> I heard back um, and followed up with uh, the village administrator today. He said we, he, we could expect to see it probably in the next two days. Um, the one business term agreement, uh, business term change that we had made as the library representatives over to the village was a uh, 60 day term notification rather than, an, I'm sorry, from 60 days to 90 days in the event that the village wanted to term the agreement for some reason. Um, that has been accepted by all three individuals representing the village. Um, there is one thing that he wants to refer to the attorneys. I don't know exactly what it is, um, but, uh, so we should see some movement from the IGA soon. Uh, 
So we'll look to look to have a revised updated IGA available for this further discussion in November. And yeah. it could be possible that it is a signed copy by the village because they will have met prior to us. Yes, since so they meet every they, two weeks, every twice a month, they meet twice a month. So it could be signed. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Looking forward to get that done. Any questions on the, the numbers that are in here are not going to change then. So we I'm, don't expect them to change okay. other than the term from 60 days to 90 days. Okay. So those can go a little bit around, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 All right. Then we come to uh, 11 new business letter E which is discussion on the levy for 2024. Um, so this item went into the uh, agenda today. So we weren't sure where finance committee was going to land. Typically what we've done previously as a board is finance committee has worked through all the details, zeros and commas and all those good things and presents the budget to the board. Um, but an actual early October meeting didn't happen. Fortunately, finance committee is going to meet on Thursday. Um, the management team have developed two different budgets. One, which is a 5% increase, which is what was submitted to the board a year ago. So we submitted a two-year budget last year. Um, another one represents, I believe it's roughly a 20% increase with incremental investment in personnel, uh, technology, electronic, um, did I say technology already? Yeah. Ebooks right. and okay. building. Yeah. Ebooks and building. Um, so those are the two different budgets that the yeah. Business Committee will be taking a closer look at. Um, and then we'll be voting on a budget in November. Did, did we get a, a feedback? I know David, you and I chatted a bit that you were told that they wanted the levy number in really quickly. Did they? Well, I mean, they, I mean, yeah, I mean, according to the village's timeline, they expect to uh, act on the on the levy uh, um, Proposal. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for. Um, by their November meeting, and and that would mean that um, by the time you meet, they would have expected to know what we wanted the levy to be. I mean, there's always. I mean, according to the timetable they provided me, there's there's time to work on the budget itself. Is the budget itself is isn't due until you know early next year, but they they need to know very soon what we expect the levy to be. Um, so, um, I mean, I can, I can get clarification again, I, I, they may be able to, uh, wait until December or the end of November, but, um, uh, I know that, that they have a timetable and, 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 and it's not just theirs, it's, you know, the county's yeah. timetable as well. So. Now the village meets twice a month and we only meet once a month. So it may be that. You know, it, we wouldn't make their November first November meeting, but our budget decision should make their the second one. second one in okay. November. Yeah. Would you like me to communicate that no, to the village or not? No, no, yeah, because I think when we get together, okay. Well, that's right, because you're going to meet on Thursday. Right? Okay. Um, we can look at the accounts that have been raised by the between the five and the twenty percent, and mm -hmm. you know what makes up those numbers. Um, because there are some accounts looking at there that are supposed to come down. I don't know how they're going to come down based on what we've been spending so far. And then ones that have gone up just to justify why the increases are going, mm -hmm. which some of that is in, you know, is in the, the staffing, which has a, a big increase. And I know we're going to make some adjustments there as well. But um, so some of the numbers might be a little higher than they need to be. Um, but if there's, Additional resources that we're looking at, or we're looking at trying to open up on some days, and this is, you know, there's some things in there, then that's probably some of the discussion items. Mm -hmm. So, other other than the documents that I've 
seen and I and I've shown to you if there's something else you want to see for the meeting on Thursday, let me know. Okay. I, all I've done at the moment is I've taken the two budgets and I've just broken them all down into okay. all the different categories that we're going to talk through. Okay. The ones that differ from a lot in terms of where they were. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on levy? Um, we do have an agenda item discuss the RFPs for executive search services. So I don't know, but Jenny, you, did you have like more you that you wanted to? That. Yeah, I think I think we discussed everything. Uh, there's a copy of the RFP in the packet. So if anyone has any questions about it. Um, so just to, sorry, to summarize the tax levy, so we are not taking action on that tonight. Rather, we're letting the finance committee complete their meeting and communicating to the village that possibly it will come. Second, the only thing I would note is I do think they operate with the committee of the whole structure, so one of the two meetings each month is a non-voting meeting. Hmm. The I committee of the whole is the hour prior to the um regular meeting okay so that's that so they'll still have a voting meeting that's my understanding yes okay i mean not that you would ever want to do this necessarily but you always have the option of scheduling a special meeting just for the purpose of adopting the levy yeah if it if the timetable just doesn't work out any other way Hey, um, so the, the next item is just in regard to the library exterior lighting for the building. Um, this is something that I think this board has had some familiarity with in regard to when uh, the lights were repaired um, over a year ago, uh, light, the lighting controls allowed us to turn the lights off at a certain time in the evening, changing with the um, setting sun and the hours of the library. Um, so one of the tasks that Building and Grounds has, is going to be taking on is submitting the application to the Architectural Board of Review to get a light, the lighting plan approved. It will also likely require some modifications to what's there today, because what's there today is out of compliance with the village's lighting code. So Jane, can you, <laughs> the, sorry for the long introduction. I think it's Allie and I in the IGA negotiations, have, this topic continues to come up. We know that it's um, uh, on the uh, top, of, top of mind for the village team that's been negotiating the IGA. Well, I can tell you there's a local man named Brian Renner. I'm not sure what, the, what his lighting company is called, but um, he did complete two different lighting plans for us. Um, and uh, I believe we have those in our possession, do we not? The links in the email. The links in the go email. To the, like, those lighting right, plans. Right, right. And so um, what didn't happen in all the um, moving parts that were going on recently was that um, it didn't get submitted to the ABR for approval. So, um, so that's the next step is to to make a formal proposal to the ABR, and then we can, and then the building and grounds can look at what the decision is and um, make a move to uh, rectify that situation. I did find that replacing the lights up, there's only going to be a couple thousand dollars. It's not going to be a huge amount. That's the cost of the lights themselves, and That's then there'll be the installation. installation something. So it may be up to five thousand dollars, but still, I didn't want that issue to rest. But I didn't have it done. Mm -hmm. So we'll that would be later. All right. Any other comments or questions about the lighting of the on the outside of the building? Okay. That brings us to library correspondence. 
think there were just a couple of uh, comments there. That staff wanted to share with you. Okay. Yeah. Besides the one that I emailed to you from uh, the patron who's moving away. Thank you for sharing. That was a really yeah. great to hear. All right. Um, that takes us to executive session. We do have a couple of items to cover during the executive session tonight. So I'm open to a motion to move into executive session. So moved. Thank you, Trustee George. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Trustee Jardine. A voice vote. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? All right, we'll move into executive session then. 